Celtics fans should look for, especially against right-handers. He's going to use that slider, especially on the inner third of the plate. He feels like that can really help him kind of iron out those struggles he had a year ago, especially here at SunTrust Park. Talked a little bit about the pitching staff. Do the Braves have enough pitching to be competitive coming out of spring training? I think they do. I, I think, you know, first and foremost, the bullpen was the area that this team felt like had to get better coming into 2018. The back end, you feel pretty good about with Viz and Ramirez and A.J. Minter, who if Viz was to struggle, Minter could be a guy that finds himself in those higher leverage situations. But I think from a, from a starting staff standpoint, I'm really expecting to see guys like Mike fulton and Sean Newcomb really take the next step. I'm really excited about what we saw this spring from those guys. Yeah, Fulte really stepped it up. Yep. What's different about him now? He's always had the, the velocity, and that's yeah. kind of what he was known for, but something changed, it seems. He, you know, he's always had the stuff, but I think it's between the ears is where he kind of struggled with the mental side of the game. But I think what you'll see when you watch Fulte on the mound this year is a, a more cleaned-up delivery. There's not as much moving parts there, and he feels like that improved delivery will really help him when the game starts speeding up. That was something he talked a lot about the last couple of years is slowing the game down. This, this cleaned-up delivery allows him to do that. And he's always been an emotional pitcher, sure. reacting to calls and, and things. We, you think we'll still see that? That's still a part of him? Yeah, he's you know he's very critical on himself. Obviously, he's his own biggest critic. But I think what you'll, you'll see from Fulte is when things start to get a little quick, speed up, we saw him step off the mound. We saw him take a deep breath. I think that really, you know, in year two of Chuck Hernandez's program, he feels like, you know, again, those adjustments that he's going to make will help him uh, kind of slow the game down and, and really help him kind to keep those emotions under check. Let's talk about some of these new Braves that we're going to see. Brandon McCarthy, obviously, in the, the pitching rotation. Some of these other guys we haven't seen before. Yeah, Brandon McCarthy, I, I think, is a really nice addition to this staff. Look, uh, you know, he, he talked about working on the slider this spring. Uh, last time he was on a big league mound in a game, it, it was a, a game-winning home run in the World Series that he threw a slider there. So I think that, you know, McCarthy will add some veteran stability to this rotation. He's healthy. That's the biggest key for him is being able to go out there and start every fifth day, make 32, 33 starts. So it's a young rotation. You know, Julio Tehran is the quote-unquote old guy of this staff right now, but uh, I think McCarthy, just having his presence in the clubhouse will be a big boost. And third base is a position that's kind of in flux as we yeah. start the season and move through it a little bit. It is. You know, Johan Camargo a little banged up towards the end of spring training, dealing with a, an issue on the side, uh, kind of an oblique slash black, uh, back injury. He feels like after about a week he'll be ready to go. When we left Orlando, he was taking BP, taking flips in the cage. So he's getting closer. He's not going to miss a ton of time. In the meantime, it'll probably be Ryan Flaherty and, and uh, maybe even Charlie Culberson getting some of those reps over at third base. As we zoom out big picture, this Braves team, what would be successful? Would it be just a better record than last year, or is this a, a playoff team? You know, I think upper 70s to low 80s, if you look at overall record, would be considered a really good year. You know, this is a team that's lost 90 games the last four years. They have not had a winning record since 2013. So it's been a long time since the Braves have had games in September that count. It's something Freddie Freeman talks a lot about is, is having meaningful September ABs. I think there's a chance they could get to September 1 and still be kind of hanging around in the, in the mix for that second wild card spot. Like I said, we're going to talk to Alex Anthopoulos on Fox 5 News at noon, coming up in just a few minutes. As you get to know him a little bit, will, will this be a year where we see a lot of moves? Is he going to make changes, trades when he needs to? You know, I talked to some folks in Toronto eh, that, that cover the Blue Jays, and they said Alex is a guy who's not afraid to pull the trigger on big deals. You look at what he did with Toronto. He goes out, brings in Price and Donaldson and Tulowitzki, so he's not afraid to make a big move. I think more likely this team will make a splash this offseason when all those big names hit the free agent market. They've got the chop going. <laughs> Blaine, you can pan around a little bit. We'll show the folks what the stadium looks like. They've got tomahawks in every seat, and it should be a pretty nice crowd. They're still working on it up in the 400 section as they get ready to open up the gates here at SunTrust Park for year two. Year two, it looks very similar, but there are a few changes here and there. I think out in the chop house, they've got the back of those uh, coolers. They've got logos and some other things, and, and the battery has certainly changed in the past year. Yeah, it sure has. The battery, just an unbelievable uh, you know, facility to have adjacent to a ballpark. It's something I think you're going to see a lot more teams that are, are talking about opening up new facilities. I think you're going to see a lot more of this mixed-use areas with bars and restaurants and shopping. I'll be honest, I came here once a week in the offseason, brought my three-year-old, let him run around. He loves it here. The other big change for the Braves organization this year, and Kevin, we're going to grill you as they bring in Blooper. <laughs> you're a Philly guy. Yeah. 
looked kind of familiar, didn't it? There are some similarities between the Bloomer <laughs> and the Philly Fanatic. And hey, that's not necessarily a bad thing. A lot of folks think that the Fanatic is the most beloved mascot in all the sports. So, so yeah, it's not a bad guy. If you have to have someone that you resemble, it's not a bad guy to have as your sort of your protege or sort of the guy you look up to, I guess. It'll be fun to kind of watch him and watch him interact with the fans and try and earn some hearts here as we uh, go through the season. Finishing up with Kevin McAlpin from 680 Fan. Thank you for joining us on our Fox 5 Atlanta Facebook page. Kevin, Freddie Freeman, still the face of this franchise. Like you said, he hasn't played in meaningful games in September. We feel like we're wasting his time here. He's such an incredible player. You know, a lot of folks wondered that a couple of years ago when the Braves started this rebuilding process was, you know, is Freddie Freeman a part of the future? And I think, you know, Freddie said it best this spring. He wants to be like his good buddy Chipper Jones. He wants to be a lifelong Atlanta Brave. So uh, I don't think that you're necessarily wasting his best years. If anything, I think there's a chance that Freddie still has room to get better as he gets older. I mean, you saw it last year before the injury. This was a guy that was putting up MVP-type numbers. Even missing seven weeks, he still finished with just one of the better seasons of his whole career. So I wouldn't say they're wasting it. If anything, I think Freddie Freeman continues to get better. And that should be scary if you're a fan of another team in the NL East. And hopefully he continues right where he left off last year. Brian Snicker going into year two. I know he's surrounded himself. We did Kevin uh, Ken Rodriguez did a story. He's surrounded himself with other managers. Yeah. He's got Walt Weiss on the staff, Ron Washington on the staff. How has that changed him? And, and have you seen him grow in the past year? I have. Yeah, I think that you know having those kind of guys that have been through the wars before, like Wash, like Walt Weiss, who's you know familiar with Atlanta certainly from his time earlier in his career. I think that'll really help Snick. There's a great communication between those guys as well as the front office as well. Something you see now. With Alex Anthopoulos and Perry Manassian, these guys seek input from everyone that they can get. So whether it's Snit or whether it's anybody else in the coaching staff, there's so much more communication, something we didn't necessarily have in years past. We didn't want to talk too much about the minor league system, but you can't ignore it. We talked about Acuna. Who's another guy down there, if, as you're coming back from spring training, who we're all going to be talking about who's playing out here uh, come September, October? Remember the name Mike Soroka, young right-hander. He's 20 years old. He carries himself like a seasoned pro. I was really, really impressed by his stuff on the field. But from a demeanor standpoint, the way he handled himself around the locker room, really, really impressed with Mike Soroka. So I think he's got a chance to, to make an impact here at some point, probably in the second half of the season. But it won't surprise me at all if Soroka is part of this rotation, uh, probably uh, you know after the All-Star break. Keeping an eye on the weather, of yeah. course, today. You got any predictions here? You're the sky guy on Twitter, right? Look, David Chanley's never wrong. Right? <laughs> David's my go-to guy. He says that they're going to get the game in, so if David says it, it's got to be true. Ryan Beasley was tweeting it out as well. Um, when you look at this team and this and this in at least, is there room to grow? I mean, obviously, the Marlins probably are packing it in yeah. already. Yeah. You got the Phillies. How do you see the NL East playing out? Well, it's the Nationals division to lose, let's be honest. If, if the Nationals don't have this thing wrapped up by late August, I'll be really, really surprised. There's a lot of questions, though. The Mets rotation has, has failed to stay healthy the last couple of years. So if they can stay healthy, and if guys like Cespedes can stay healthy, the Mets have a chance to at least be in the mix in the division. I think the Phillies will be better adding Arietta and adding uh, Carlos Santana will certainly help. Uh, but look, you know, I think the Braves probably middle of the pack somewhere. Uh, but again, you want to see steps in the right direction. And I think you're going to see that. And I think you can see a really exciting team with the addition, with the youth movement you're going to see throughout the course of this year. All right, Kevin, we appreciate it. Kevin, you can hear him on 680 The Fan all year long as he travels with the Braves. And it's a busy time of year for you. Yeah, <laughs> let's start. go get him. Yeah, play ball, right? 162 <laughs> to go. And I want to thank you guys for joining us on the Fox 5 Atlanta Facebook page. Like I said, we'll be live with Alex Anthopoulos, the Braves GM, in just a couple of minutes on Fox 5 News at noon. What happy opening day, everybody. Congratulations on getting here. Yeah.